What if I told you we submitted speeches from Biden, Kamala Harris, Obama, Bill Clinton, and Trump to an AI program, and the results will surprise you. Despite graduating from prestigious universities, many politicians speak to you like you are not as smart as you really are. Stick around as we uncover why they do this, what it means for you, and how you can speak and influence like a politician. President Biden earned his law degree from Syracuse University, Kamala Harris from the University of California, Barack Obama went to Harvard Law School, Bill Clinton went to Yale Law, and Donald Trump attended Wharton School of Business at the University of Penn. Those three are all Ivy League universities. So why do they speeches often sound like they are aimed at a middle school audience? Let's start with why politicians who have graduated from top tier universities like Harvard, Yale, and Wharton still chooses to speak at a level that feels, well, less than sophisticated. We submitted their speeches into ChatGPT to analyze their reading level. And results show that many of those speeches are written in the seventh grade reading level. So why do these highly educated individuals speak to you as if they think you cannot understand anything. The answer lies in accessibility and persuasion, actually. Let's break this down into simple steps. Step one, maximizing audience reach. By speaking at a seventh grade reading level, politicians like Biden, Trump, and Harris ensure that their message is clear to a wide range of people, regardless of their education level. This strategy is crucial in reaching a broad voter base. The AI analysis confirmed that their speeches are designed to be understood by the majority of the population who, according to studies, can only read at a seventh to eighth grade level. Step two, emotional appeal. Simplified speech often carries a stronger emotional appeal. By using straightforward language, these politicians connect emotionally with their audience. For instance, when Trump, a Wharton graduate, uses phrases like make America great again, the simplicity of the language is what makes it resonate with such a large portion of voters. Step three, reducing the risk of misinterpretation. The simpler the language, the lower the risk of being misunderstood. Even for politicians who have studied at elite institutions, the goal is to communicate in a way that leaves little room to misinterpretation. By keeping their language accessible, they avoid the complexities that could alienate or confuse their voters. And step four, repetition and memorability. Simple phrases are easier to remember and repeat. This is why slogans like, yes we can from Obama, or build back better from Biden are so effective. They stick in your mind and are easy to recall, which is precisely what these politicians want as they build momentum in their campaign. So how does this strategy affect you as a voter? The simplified speech can have several impacts. So we're gonna talk about all of them. Impact number one, feeling patronized. One common pain point is that many people feel patronized by this approach. It can seem like these highly educated politicians are underestimating your intelligence or knowledge. This can lead to frustration and a sense of disconnect between the public and those in power. Impact number two, manipulation concerns. Another concern is that by oversimplifying complex issues, politicians might be manipulating public opinion. When a politician reduces a multifaceted issue like healthcare reform to a catchy slogan, they might be glossing over the important details that could directly impact your life. This can lead to a situation where voters support policies without fully understanding the implication. Impact number three, Polarization. Simplified speech can also contribute to political polarization. When complex issues are boiled down to black and white terms, it's easier for politicians to create an us versus them mentality. This can deepen divisions in society and make it harder to find common ground. Let's discuss a real life scenario. Imagine you're watching a debate and a candidate who graduated from an Ivy League school repeatedly uses simple, almost childlike phrases to describe their policies. You might find yourself thinking, do they think I'm not capable of understanding more complex issues or ideas? It can make you feel disconnected from political process and less likely to engage with it. But here's the twist. This frustration is exactly what politicians rely on. By keeping things simple, they avoid the deeper discussions that could lose the support among less informed voters. When listening to a political speech, focus on what's not being said. If a politician, despite their elite education, is using overly simple language, Ask yourself, why? Are they avoiding complexity because they don't want to explain it? Or are they trying to appeal to a broader audience? Developing critical listening skills can help you see through the simplicity and understand the real message behind the words. Now, let's explore the advantages of more complex speech, which is often used by politicians like Obama and Clinton, who graduated from Harvard and Yale. Here's why this approach can be beneficial. Number one, encouraging deeper engagement. When a speech is more complex, it encourages the audience to think critically about the issues being discussed. This can lead to a more informed electorate, 
which is essential for a healthy democracy. Obama's Harvard education is evident in his detailed explanations of policy proposals, which help voters make more informed decisions. Advantage number two, building credibility. A more complex speech can also build credibility. When a politician demonstrates their understanding of the intricacies of an issue, it can increase public trust in their ability to lead. Bill Clinton's Yale education allowed him to delve deeply into policy details, making him appear knowledgeable and trustworthy, whether or not that was true or not. Advantage number three, fostering inclusivity. Complex speech can also be more inclusive. It acknowledges that the audience is capable of understanding detailed information, which can foster a greater sense of respect between politicians and the public. This approach can make you feel like you're being treated as an equal partner in the political process, rather than being talked down to. So what if you want to adapt some of these communication techniques yourself? Here's how you can speak like a politician. Step one, simplify your message. Begin by distilling your message down to its most essential point. Avoid jargon or overly complex language. The goal is to make sure your audience understands you clearly, no matter their background or education level. For example, instead of saying we need to implement a comprehensive fiscal policy, you might say, we need to manage our money better. Simple, right? Step two, use repetition for emphasis. Just like politicians, use repetition to drive your key points home. Repeating important phases makes them more memorable. For instance, if you're emphasizing the need for change, you might say, change is necessary. Change is coming and change starts with us. You like that? I know, That's, that was good. Step number three, appeal to emotion. Don't shy away from emotional appeals. Emotions are powerful motivators. If you want to persuade someone, connect with them emotionally. Use stories, personal experiences, or vivid examples that resonate with your audience feelings. For example, sharing a story about someone's struggle can make your argument more relatable and impactful. Step four, keep it relatable. Make your speech or message relatable by connecting with common experiences or concerns. People are more likely to engage with and remember content that speaks directly to their lives. When discussing a complex issue, bring it down to earth with real life examples of comparison that your audience can understand. Step five, create a memorable slogan. Finally, if you're looking to leave a lasting impression, create a memorable slogan. This could be a catchphrase or a few words that encapsulate your message. Think of it as your message brand. For instance, if you're advocating for environmental awareness, a slogan like protect our planet is short, memorable, and impactful. So why does all of this matter? The way politicians speak to you affects how you perceive them, their policies, and ultimately the choices you make as a voter. If you are hearing simplified, emotionally charged messages, you might miss out on the bigger picture. But on the other hand, more complex speeches can provide you with information you need to make an informed decision. The stakes are really, really high. Your understanding of these speeches could impact not just your vote, but the future direction of your country. Here's some things you can do next. Start paying closer attention to the speeches you hear. Don't just listen to the words. Think about the underlying message and what they mean for you and your community. Engage critically with political content. Ask questions. And don't be afraid to seek out additional information. Remember, your ability to understand and engage with these messages is key to a functioning democracy. If you want to learn more about this topic, here are three resources that might interest you. First off, read the book, The Political Brain by Drew Western. It gives a deep dive into how emotions influence political decision making. Check out fatcheck.org. It's a website, which is a nonpartisan website that provides detailed analysis of political claims and speeches. Or you might want to consider listening to a podcast, The Argument, by The New York Times. On it, they discuss the complexities of political rhetoric and its impact on society. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more content like this. And remember, the next time you hear a politician speaking, listen closely. You might be surprised by what's really going on behind those words. Till next time.